This is my new carry-on computer, a uh, codename Swiss Cheese because, well, there's a bunch of holes in a yellow case. The point is that it is a full desktop computer in a carry-on case. This one in particular is fully air-cooled because I was somewhat afraid of the TSA taking a liquid-cooled machine specifically if I wanted to bring it on a plane. In fact, I'm still kind of worried about that, but here I am past security in Atlanta, so I guess it's fine. Now, you might be wondering why I even need or want something like this. The truth is that my laptop is not particularly strong, so for weekend trips, I usually have to bring something a little bit more powerful. In addition, I've moved a few times over the past few years, which means that once or twice a month, I've had to package my computer into this large suitcase completely padded with foam and then bring all of my computer accessories with me if I want to get any actual work done. It was a huge pain. The obvious solution would have been to buy a new, more powerful laptop, but over the past 10 years I've owned like 3 or 4 different laptops and I'm kind of tired of buying machines that I don't know how to fix myself. In addition, this thing was way less expensive. It was maybe $300 for all of the computer pieces and parts to fit into the case, whereas buying a new laptop with comparable specs would have been easily over $2,000. With this case, all parts are replaceable, so if something breaks, I don't need to buy a new machine, I can just replace that one part. This means that there's less overall waste, and it should be more cost effective in the long run. Now, even though this is one of the coolest things I think I've ever physically built, I didn't really feel like a building montage would be right for this video. So instead, I figure, let's kind of list out all of the mistakes and pain points I felt along the way. Like how the hole for the backplate was slightly too large, so I needed to create a new one with balsa wood. I also really messed up when placing the mounting screws for the motherboard. If I were to build this again, I would probably get an open frame ATX test bench like this one, mount that first, and then figure out how to place the back plate from there. For this design, I sprung for the Nanook Nanuk 935 instead of other cases specifically because this one was thick enough to fit some small desktop fans. But I kind of screwed up when trying to figure out the right layout for the venting holes. Also, because there are wheels, I had to work around the weird plastic bulges inside of the case, meaning that there was only one possible orientation for the power supply, and that the GPU had to sit on top of that. This also meant that I couldn't use my more powerful Noctua fans, as there was no way to plug anything into the GPU if I did that. Again, I was afraid of water cooling because of the TSA, so I had to go back to the stock AMD cooler. With that said, I'm not really noticing any large temperature spikes under heavy load, possibly because of the open case design, but it's still a shame I couldn't find a more elegant cooling solution. I also spent hours and hours trying to find a monitor that would fit the case and ended up with one that I'm not too happy with but works for now. The main problem here is that most manufacturers only put the screen size and the size of the entire monitor with the stand included, and neither of those measurements were exactly what I needed. I mean, looking at it now, it's not actually that bad, and most of the time the screen that's in this case will probably be a second monitor, but it's another pain point that I thought I'd mention. The only other issue I have with this case is that the front plate was not mounted properly and that I didn't really know where to put the power and reset buttons, so they're just kind of hot glued onto it. I mean, there aren't really any other issues that I came across, but I figured I'd mention the ones that I could think of in the case that you guys want to build one yourself. Honestly, it was a lot of fun and a good weekend build for anybody that wants to give it a shot. What I have here is the first iteration of something that I actually really like, but as everyone knows, the first iteration of anything you make will always be really rough. That said, I still love it to death and would love to see more people with something like this, so that's why I decided to make the video in the end. There are, of course, a few small things that I still want to do, but this is a good place to end for now. If you like this type of content and want to see it continue in the future, please consider supporting me on either GitHub Sponsors or Patreon. Also, quick shout out to those who have already decided to support me on Patreon, like Mossy, Jeremy, and Valentine. I really do appreciate the support. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.